Okay, folks, here we are again. I've counted all the ratios. I ended up putting little marks on some of the dogs here just to make things a little easier to count. Okay, everything's in good condition. Everything's ready to go back in. Must not forget that little button. So this is gonna be an interesting little Jenga puzzle. I've gotta make sure this thing, this is the oil pump, and that's the oil pump drive sprocket. I've gotta make sure that that slots into, oh, I shouldn't have done that. That's going to slide into here, and okay, this is going to slide into there, and these two have to slide into there, and this has to slide into there, and these have to slide into there, those, that there, and that there. Yeah, easy. You can see that this was a great idea for cheap production, but hopefully it won't be impossible to reinstall. Okay. May need to get some more light on the subject, no matter. Okay, and I can see that the gear pump, the oil pump is engaged. Wow, that was easier than I expected. Holy crap, okay. Uh, all right, let's, let's thread this back in. Yep, get that washer. Ah, uh, yes. And that piece right there is the one that Aprilia notoriously forgot to put a thread locker on. So it kept coming loose, not just on mine, but many others as well. There we go. All right, wow, I can't believe it was that easy. Okay, what else do we have to do here? So now that I've got the ratios, I can at least figure out if I have an SP1 or an SP2. The compression ratio is not too bad, but after 6,000 miles, it wouldn't hurt to put some new pistons, at least rings. I remember when I was racing these things we would put new rings in after every other race at best sometimes we'd leave it a little longer but if i was feeling bored and or had some extra cash burning a hole in my pocket then i it's really easy to do all you have to do is these four nuts here at the base and they put them in the base because the cylinder expands quite a bit and you don't want to cause this aluminum cylinder to expand while it's being held in by steel bolts. So it's bolted at the base to allow for cylinder expansion and then the head is bolted to the cylinder so that the whole thing can move and expand as necessary. So it's just take the pipe off which is like bolt here, bolt here two bolts here and the whole pipe comes off, four bolts here, 
undo the power valve and the plug and this is the two-stroke oil feed the pressure feed and then the whole cylinder just comes off it's dead simple it's a great way to learn how to work on motorcycle engines to start with a two-stroke because they're so simple so yeah those bolts undone the cylinder drops off there's a little circlip holding the cylinder holding the piston into place pull the circlip push the pin out, push the new piston on with the rings on it and then put the cylinder back in bolt it up power valves, plug oil, feed line, don't ever forget this unless you're running premix if you're running the oil in the tail here two stroke oil tank is in the tail if you're using that don't ever forget to reconnect this line I saw that happen once I saw someone forget to connect this line and their bike lasted one lap in the morning practice session and that's it um, yeah so that's how easy it is to swap pistons and rings Let's do the output shaft. So this one went on the inside. Now, let's see if I can push this sprocket on. Sometimes it's a little reluctant there we go got it now I've got this bucket of oil here Murphy's Law says I'm going to drop something into it maybe not this time though There we go, snap that on. Let's just connect this for temporary testing purposes. There we go. Okay, and always check the full shift operation before you button everything up. I was once doing an R6 engine rebuild for a customer he stripped a gear in his transmission and brought it to me so I was happy to strip the engine or strip, pull the bike, pull the motor out of the bike open the engine up, fix the transmission, replace that one gear and then bolted everything back up, put the engine back in took it for a test ride and realized, oh no it's not shifting into third gear or something like that and I realized I had no alternative so I pulled the engine back out opened the engine back up sure enough I had put a gear in the wrong place so as a result of rebuilding that R6 engine multiple times in a short period I got to be quite familiar with that engine so learn from my mistake make sure you shift it through all the transmission gears before you button everything up so having said that uh, let's see so we're now in neutral It doesn't it want to go into first? Okay, there we go. See, there we go. That's that's why you test it. I had this thing on the wrong tooth. So if I had put everything back together, it wouldn't have shifted into first. So, but now. That's first. 
neutral, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Okay, so it gets progressively more difficult to turn the gearbox input shaft the higher the transmission ratio. Okay, fifth, fourth, third, second, first, neutral. Okay, it's all working and those are all tightened up. That's working. I've got to put the shifter in. So yeah, the, sh the Kickstarter actuates that way and pushes the gear in. Just like the solenoid on a starter motor in a car. And it can only go that far. That's the spring working as it should. Okay, now ready for the clutch again. Pushing. Oil seal. I certainly have learned that the quicker you can do this reassembly after the disassembly, the less likely you are to make mistakes. Although. This whole video and YouTube thing for me started because I was keen to not forget any steps in the reassembly process. I made a video for a friend to show him the process of stripping his Aprilia. And, oh, I forgot, <laughs> there we go, perfect example. I forgot the washer. I'm just worried, I don't want to tear this little seal. Yeah, so he wanted to see the video, so I told him, okay, I'll upload it onto YouTube as a way of getting it to him, because he lived in Austin while I was in Dallas. And uh, yeah, that video now has 300,000 hits. Okay, so... Everything feels good, nice and clean, no dirt, no grit, no debris. Oh shit, I'm gonna have to get another gasket. Okay, well what I might do is I will order a new gasket and then I will put some silicone on this one for now. Some RTV, which of course, stands for room temperature vulcanization. Yeah, wow, nice and clean. Okay, so I'll button this up just for demonstration purposes and then I will check the oil leak 
and if necessary, I'll pull it open and put some ITV on that to seal it. But this process is so easy. Okay, so I've got to engage the primary and I've got to engage the coolant pump. Pushing in first or not? I'm just really worried about tearing that little seal. Okay, so this gear has to mesh with this gear, and this gear has to mesh with this gear. That's it. And this gear has to mesh with this gear. So one, two, three. One, two, three. That's all we have to mesh. It's not meshing on this one. Okay, now it is. There we go. That's it. That's all there is. The rest is putting these things back in here. Or actually, no, maybe they're the wrong ones. Stay there. Yes, there we go. Is that there? No, that's... Oh, and if you ever do find that you've been unable to pull these little bushings out, just get a tap. Just get a tap, thread it in, pop, out they come. Okay, so that's right. Damn it, I was right in the first place. Doesn't really matter. I'm still going to have to redo it if this leaks. So it's just good practice. If you make a mistake, go back and do it again. Don't let yourself question the decision. Just redo it. If you're ever not sure, pull it apart, double check. Like that. Now, that'll just mean I'm extra double good at reinstalling this cover. Extra double good. Fancy. 
mechanic talk. So those are for the clutch basket and as you noticed, as I mentioned, one, two, three, mm. that doesn't seem right. Yeah, well look at that, something went wrong. Is that these bolts should all stick out about the same distance and that's not right that's right that's right and that one I remember went there because it had that hose clamp on it yep they should all stick out about the same distance yep that's right that's right yep Wow, somehow managed to lose one. Yep, that's right, okay. All right, crisis averted. And now again, this is the classic case of the crisscross pattern. Start at one. wrench and torque them all down. Ah uh, yes, and the basket. So this washer went in there, just like on the Ducati Panigale. Now I don't think, well, it's worth a try. No, you know what, it's not gonna make a mess so I'll just pull all the plates off and then yeah yeah that's right so I'm just thinking of this rotation that's gonna rotate with this that's gonna rotate with that that's basically just a spacer to help with the oil seal We've got our Belleville washers. So this is just an ordinary washer. That's a Belleville washer. I don't know if you can see the contour on it. It's concave in this direction, convex in that direction. And I can see from the wear marks that this surface rests against this surface. So I know that that's the right way that that went in. And, okay, let's reinstall the plates. Uh, yes, so we can see the wear mark here from that Belleville washer. And these are all sharp edge out. So these have been stamped this way. A big punch came down and went ka-chunk. And as a result, these pieces here are all rounded over this way. And it's sharp on this end. I don't know if there's much difference if you install it sharp edge out or in, but you always want to reinstall it the same way it came out. Although, I did once see a video of the Suzuki production line, and they had a bunch of little old ladies smacking those engines together as fast as they possibly could. They were not paying any attention to detail. They were just there to get it done as quickly as possible. 
So having seen that, I am less concerned about accuracy. Let's see, I'm, there's some little marks on these I'm trying to line up. Just for the heck of it. And then that's the last steel plate. Yep, definitely sharp out. That's the way it went. No discerning marks. I could have done the nut first, I guess. Uh, yeah. I've done a little damage to this, but it wouldn't hurt to use it again. You just want to make sure you don't bend that same edge up more than once because it could get a stress fracture and break, which would mean it was no longer holding that nut in place. So I will wedge it up. Actually, yeah. Yeah, what I might do is I'll leave that unstaked. I'll fill it with oil and I'll torque these and check and see if there's any leak. If there's no leak after a couple of days, I'll pull it off. I mean, I will stake that washer. If there is a leak, I'll pull the cover off, put some RTV in there, put it back on, check it again. And if it still leaks, then I'll just wait until I get the replacement gasket. And then do this whole process. Well, this cover process again. Okay, there, yeah, that was it. So let's put it into first gear. Okay, that's first gear. the dot, the dot to the dot, here we go, okay, now that's the entire process of pulling the transmission and reinstalling on a street registered road legal sport bike, I know it's a lot longer process than is required for something like a TZ250, but the TZ is not road legal. It also cannot go 10,000 miles between services, like this little monster. that ringing. Let's see. Okay. on there. Okay, I think that's about it. No need to bore you folks with the rest of the details. Suffice to say, the process is about complete. 
this thing sh will be up and running again when I have thawed out my freezing cold hands. Hmm, okay. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I will have more. Oh, yes, as I mentioned, I just picked up my Christmas present. So I will have a little rundown on the difference between my two Supermoto racers. The KTM, which I built from scratch from a SX520 with, uh, oh, what's that brand of wheels? I can't remember. But I swapped the transmission in that to a six speed redid the suspension while I was working for SMS Racing and just got this today factory supermoto racer it's going to be interesting figuring out how to convert those slicks those 17 and 16.5 inch wheels to a 19 and a 21 inch wheel because I want to be able to ride it on the asphalt and on the dirt we have a flat track little race course in my backyard. Okay, yeah, so we'll have more on that later. Thanks for watching.